Yo, so guys, I'm Stephanie here, and today I'm bringing us in the video. In this video, we're reacting to the new FNAF game theory, the final security breach mystery solved. I wonder if this will be about Tales from the Beast Blacks, but I feel like it's too soon after Tales from the Beast Blacks for this to be about it. Uh, it's 18 minutes long, so I feel like the the um, the progress like on the on the theory it would take longer to make. I think um, so. I feel like it's probably not about Tales. I'm guessing it's just he found something new. Um, but, but, uh, I'm actually streaming in, like, an hour and a half. I don't know if I'll be able to get this out before the stream. I was thinking about doing this on the stream, but then I was like, well, I want to upload this as a video, too. Um, and then what do I do? Just edit the video mid-stream before I play FNAF 4? Because, yeah, today's actually the anniversary of FNAF 4. But I'll try to get this out by, like, three, like, half an hour before. Um, but, yeah, let's, um, let's try to, um... Let's try, let's try what? Try to let's watch this, okay? Let's react to the new FNAF game theory. At this point, we've solved every lingering mystery from Security Breach. We looked at this thing from top to bottom. Glamrock Freddy, Golden Freddy, the missing Bonnie, the infuriating Patient 46. We connected every <laughs> detail. We called every child a robot. And that's where I was happy to leave it. FNAF dead and buried once more. Except for that time I talked about the potential real-life ARG, but we're just going to ignore that that ever happened. But now it's reborn yet again. <laughs> so <the> true. <laughs> top of a brand new DLC teaser a month ago and the start of a brand new book series uh -huh. literally this week FNAF is back which means it's time I dive back in and cover the one thing that I was too scared to talk about when I was doing theories earlier this year it's the one topic that very few have spoken about because it's just so darn confusing uh, I appreciate that, that probably doesn't narrow it down a whole bunch because let's face it most of this game's lore feels that way but this was on a whole separate level Fred boys and mang girls it's time to talk about the blob <laughs> Oh god. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello, Rooney. Welcome yep. to Game Theory, the show that's full of so much agony from analyzing FNAF, it could probably bring its own animatronic to life. Maybe then I'd finally get a vacation. Soon, my precious. So, you heard the cold open, there's a new FNAF book, there's a new FNAF teaser. But before I get to any mm -hmm. of that, there's one topic that all of us left lingering. Before you get to that, okay. Everyone's favorite massive animatronic parts and black tentacles, the blob. Or, as I like to call him, Freddy Spaghetti. On that note, by the way, I, I don't know if you're aware, but FNAF is in the process of becoming a real pizza place. Uh, not real, real. Not Basically, the place, but. That Mr. Beast did for his food company, where existing restaurants just make extra food under a different brand. Isn't it a delivery service? Service. It all. Check it out after the video. It's actually really fascinating stuff and very relevant to the franchise now. <laughs> anyway, in the real life Freddy's comes the need for some real life food. And if Freddy's Freddy spaghetti, spaghetti. Item on that menu, so help me, I will write a politely worded letter to their social media then, to kindly Imagine they make like the heads of the blob, like the whoops, the fun time Freddy and stuff, and the Chica. They make that into like meatballs. <laughs> That would be funny. <laughs> Consider. Anyway, the blob was at the time the mystery that no one could crack. Then you've got the blob as well. I've the talked about it. On another level of complicated. With the blob, there are so many animatronic bodies there that have no. Reason. He's gonna say something that I know I'll disagree yeah. with. I I guarantee. I put Henry in the blob. The blob is just the catch-all. All loose ends. <laughs> and everything we can't understand. In that. It's in the blob. But you know what? It's been a year. <laughs> Everything we can't understand. The blob. into this literal landfill of a character. Today we're getting some definitive answers as to what and who this thing might actually be. Those it's Molten Freddy. <laughs> With well, extra stuff. Absolutely help clarify how we talk about this franchise moving forward. And two, they'll certainly have severe implications for the ruined DLC that's coming out early next year. I hope he talks about this being similar to the Actor Amalgamation in, in Princess Quest, but I feel like he won't. Here's the quickest of reminders. In Security Breach, if you stay past 6 a.m. and defeat all the other animatronics, you're able to descend down into the basement of the Pizza Plex. It's there that you discover the remains of the FNAF 6 restaurant with a big old hole in the middle. Try to go down that hole on your own, and you're immediately jump-scared by the face of Funtime Freddy attached to a big, oily tentacle. But hop into Glamrock Freddy, and he protects you, saying that his friends are here, and that they're angry and confused. Then, during the Afton fight, those same oily tentacles pop in from the vents, trying to capture you or anyone, to be honest. Burn Afton enough times, 
you get the final cutscene where the blob returns to drag Acton mm -hmm. off into the ceiling to keep him in cold storage until the next game. And because this is one of only a handful of animated cutscenes in Security Breach, everyone assumes that this is the true canon ending of the game. So figuring out what this thing is meant I to think be it is. must be pretty darn important. Mostly because it was like in the trailer. Although Princess Quest was also in a previous game, so who knows. The best place to start is to understand what exactly this thing's made out of. Because really, it's a who's who of FNAF history. Obviously, we see Funtime Freddy as its main face. As you're descending down through the hole, though, you can definitely make out FNAF 1's Chica. The shape of the head and the torso are a dead giveaway here. Peeking out is also FNAF 1's Bonnie. Notice the coloring of it and the lack of rosy cheeks. We also have a few random arms and legs popping out. These all match the style of FNAF 1 animatronics. Notice the three toes on the feet and the three fingers and thumb with no joints on the fingers of the hands. And that's kind of about all that you can make out from just looking at this thing in the game. But if you mm -hmm. extract the in-game model and look at all the other sides, you find that there's a lot more hidden here. Mangle is hanging out directly opposite Freddy. You can literally see that in the game, though. You also find its ribcage, arm, and two of its feet hanging out elsewhere. Low on one side of the blob is the puppet's mask, except it's missing one major detail. The iconic the tear tracks are gone. That is a huge clue that we're going to need to address. And finally, we have Circus Baby's mask, the only one of the animatronics to not have her eyes lit up. Again, that is a Besides huge puppet. detail that has to be important to this thing in some way. Baby's arm Puppet's eyes don't, don't glow either. We know it's definitely Baby's and not Funtime. Time Freddy's because baby's hands have rounded silver tips on the fingers, just like we see here. Like I said, it is a real mishmash of animatronics. It's almost like Steel Wool wanted a one-stop shop for FNAF's greatest hits. And weird details like baby's eyes being extinguished and the puppet's missing tears feel like the game trying to tell us something, but what? Well, after identifying each and every arm and leg sticking out of this thing, there was still one animatronic in the spaghetti that really got my Matt Pat tingle going. This guy right here, hidden away at the very the endoskeleton. Of the is a naked endoskeleton consisting of a single animatronic head, two arms, and a missing eye, with a body position that looks like it's desperately trying to pull itself out. His position right at the bottom also felt like he was intentionally hidden, the kind of thing that you would overlook if you The were Stitch Wraith. He's meant to be important. He's the only animatronic in this mess that's missing an eye, but his other eye is illuminated, which immediately puts him on the same level as the more iconic... It looks like the other mangle head, I think. Amalgamation. So, who is it? What is it? Just a random endoskeleton? No couldn't be. But to know for sure, I had to look closer. My first instinct was that it must be Golden Freddy. I mean, looking at the roster of characters inside the blob, pretty much every major animatronic is represented in some way. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Puppet, Baby, all of them are here, but Golden Freddy is strangely absent. Plus, with the animatronic only having one eye, I thought that maybe it was discreetly hinting at the fact that while the crying child spirit was released in the good ending of FNAF 3, another spirit remained trapped in metal. Cassidy. I bet it hasn't happened yet, man. Come on. <laughs> spirit still here and still angry it felt very reminiscent of the two endings of fnaf 3 in case you don't recall fnaf 3 was the first game in the series to introduce a good and bad ending finding all the secret mini games led you to happiest day where the souls of the dead kids are put to rest and we're given a final image of unlit animatronic heads but if you just finish the game normally you instead get this the bad ending an image of those exact same masks but each one with one eye lit up a spirit remains in each body well all of them except for golden freddy's mask in the background which has two eyes lit two eyes for two i like how he shows that there's literally only one that's actually glowing <laughs> and he's like oh yeah there's two. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> in the intervening years one has been released however despite lots of pieces thematically lining up there was one glaring issue here golden freddy doesn't have himself an endoskeleton He's a springlock suit. It's why Golden Freddy is always hunched over. He has no skeleton, no frame. So if Golden Fre That's not what springlock suits mean. They don't just like take out the endoskeleton. The endo's just like it just moves out of the way so a person can fit in. A springlock suit doesn't mean like when it's in suit mode, the endoskeleton is just removed. That's not how it works. Freddy's now off the table. Who else could it be? Well, obviously his defining feature is that one lit eye. But it's Mangle. not only that one eye is lit, it's that he's physically missing the second eye. So I sat down and went through my mind's encyclopedia of FNAF lore to remember what other characters only have one eye. Immediately I thought Foxy might make a But he has character, two. Except Foxy isn't actually missing an eye. He just has one covered up by an eye patch. Same yeah. thing for Withered Foxy. Maybe it could be Lefty, the strange black animatronic bear from FNAF 6 that was the but it's the opposite eye for the puppet nope the eye that's 
missing is on the wrong side. You know what? Forget it. Maybe it is just a random endoskeleton because why not? It's security breach. But you know what? It's not that either. You see, FNAF 1 endoskeletons are canonically more boxy and streamlined. Not this guy. The body in the blob is actually closer to the endo 2 models that we see used in FNAF 2. It the looks like -like mangle. <laughs> skeleton. But even then, what we see in the blob is different. Notice the thick round discs that are directly connected to the skeletal structure. You don't see that in endo 2s It's almost like these things' arms are actually its legs. But that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Mangle. Or does it? Because there is one animatronic that actually has hands connecting to leg joints. Mangle. An endo O2 head that's missing its right eye. One with white Mangle. <laughs> with four rounded fingers at the end of each hand. It is the Mangle. mangle. <laughs> you know, it's Mangle's other head. That weird guy who's just yep. kind of hanging out over there on the body. It is a direct match. Okay, gotta be honest with you. I was excited to identify this mystery animatronic, but uh, also, everyone yeah, already believed that. <laughs> animatronic that's trying to pull itself out of the bottom of the blob feels like it should mean something special but mangle being the answer just feels empty like yeah we already i mean mangle's already in it it's just the other half of it very obvious yeah. on the body so uh like so much else inside of this game it was a mystery that led to a dead end but hey now that we have the complete and definitive roster of who's inside this thing we can actually start to figure out why we already had mangle there that was, this did nothing weird picks when last we left everyone we had molten freddy and scrap baby so why do we now have older versions of these animatronics inside the blob also how do we suddenly have FNAF well it can either be um FNAF AR animatronics or it could be just that I mean the scrap animatronics weren't in FNAF VR so maybe Steel just doesn't have the the scrap animatronic models so they just use the older ones and maybe it's just a minor inconsistency one and two I feel like that's more likely to be honest none of these older models were a part of FNAF 6's fire can someone please just use anything other than fire to kill these things if at first you don't succeed try try again but at a certain point you just gotta like cut it off and be like you know what maybe there's something else silver bullet Steak in the heart, garlic, just literally it. <laughs> garlic. This was the main reason I didn't want to cover the blob. Just felt like one big continuity error. But now that I've come to the end of my sanity trying to determine what animatronic a finger belongs to, I think an answer has presented itself to me through the darkness. And you know what? I was wrong. Dead wrong. So the opening area of security breach is Rockstar Row, and it's full of memorabilia from the past pizzerias. You got stuff like OG Foxy's torso. Oh god, he's gonna say what Daco said that, it's, that some of them are missing. Guitar, Freddy's bow tie, Chica's cupcake, even random stuff like Chica's feet or animatronic leg pieces. But it's not the items that are there that are interesting; it's the ones that are missing. If you look closely at these display cases, the majority of them have at least one missing item with a small description plaque in front of the empty space. Unfortunately, we can't see what exactly is on the plaques but if torsos and feet are being displayed then it isn't too hard to imagine that these could have been the heads masks arms items that have been collected and added to the blob in fact that would explain why it's circus baby and funtime freddy heads inside of the blob instead of scrap baby and molten freddy it's not a continuity error like all of us I, I think it is i really do just think it is <laughs> remember that fnaf sister location ended with all the animatronics teamed up to form enter a literal tangle of wires and eyeballs and that was pretty much it but once Ennard was puked up and Baby got voted out of the team, that tangle of wires needed shape and form. This, in turn, gave rise to Scrap Baby and Molten Freddy, creatures created from literal trash, not official versions of the characters, for as much as they might look like the original characters. As far as Fazbear Entertainment memorabilia is concerned, the Circus Baby Mask and Funtime Freddy Head, they're the latest versions of those characters. They're put on display for fans of the series to see. Hearts that this tangle of black goo could steal from the displays and absorb into its own being. Same with the OG suits and Mangle body. Scrap Baby and Molten Freddy Meanwhile, they're unofficial characters. They were never created by Fazbear Entertainment or displayed inside of a pizzeria. In short, I'm sorry, Steel Wool. I I'm not sorry about a lot of the things I've said about some of the lore decisions in this game, but in this individual case, I'm sorry that I assumed that this was just a sloppy continuity error when in actuality, it was a lot more thoughtful than I could have ever expected. I don't think so. <laughs> of the doubt here. So, like an overeager Funko Pop collector, there's a tangle of black wires lurking in a pizza plex hunting for souvenirs from the franchise. And believe it or not, this actually 
actually lines up with a random detail from the story New Kid in the third Fazbear Frights book. As a group of kids are exploring an abandoned Ow. Chinese restaurant, we get this line. Quote, while they were in the bathroom, the slithering? was pretty sure he heard something slithering through the walls. He didn't say anything. From the way the other boys' faces paled, he knew they heard it too. That is the line, and it never pays off. Not in this story, not in this book, not in the entire book series. The whole story actually winds up being a Golden Freddy story, strangely enough, but it leaves Chekhov's tentacle monster just sitting there in the walls waiting to be used, probably because it was meant to pay off in Security Breach, a game that was originally meant to release closer to that story's publication, but the repeated delays in Security Breach threw all of that synergistic programming off. All right, so we know why it physically looks the way it does, but really, what are these tentacles? Well, that's where the puppet mask missing tears comes in. I think we're all familiar with this thing's story, right? In the aftermath of kids getting killed at Freddy's restaurants, the creator Henry institutes a security program in the form of the puppet. In FNAF 6, we literally see this thing called a security puppet. Yep. Sadly, Henry's daughter Charlie is killed outside of the confines of the restaurant. The puppet finds her too late and lies down beside her in the rain, and the two become one. And in FNAF 6, the last official time that we see this character, it comes complete with tears in its eyes. In fact, in every iteration of the character, the puppet mask has tears. Or should I say almost every iteration? Look at the security puppet minigame from before Charlie's death. The mask has no tears. It's only after Charlie dies and the thing is possessed that tears mm -hmm. suddenly form on the mask. Yeah. Tears mean that Charlie's soul is inside of this thing. But now, there are no tears left on the mask because Charlie's soul has been released. She's no longer inside security puppet. When Henry burned everything at the end of FNAF 6, it worked. Kind of. No. <laughs> it did not. Trapped inside of the metal. This coincides with what we see on the blueprints for Remnant. Overheating might neutralize the effects permanently. Might. And neutralize the effects. And that's also Remnant. Charlie's spirit is not Remnant. And the puppet's not metal. So that's not Remnant at all. So no. <laughs> also, and also, it says... Neutralize the effects. Neutralize the effects. That doesn't mean the remnant will disappear. It means that it won't, like, keep you alive. Any like, say, say William was alive in FNAF 6, and he was using remnant to survive. If he burns, then he'll die, but the remnant will still be there. It will still exist. It doesn't just burn away. It The, the effects just don't work anymore. And it also says might, meaning there's a possibility that even that won't happen. So, like... So, and, and the fact that the puppet is not an animatronic made of metal. <laughs> I mean, it's an animatronic. Is it kind? It's kind of an animatronic, um, but it's a puppet for the most part. It's not metal. <laughs> so, and remnant is metal, and a spirit itself isn't remnant. So that one, it wouldn't work. <laughs> the puppet wouldn't be set free. And neither would the missing kids. The way. There's one thing that Henry's fire didn't account for. Something that it didn't purge agony. You see, Remnant Soul Metal might be the focus of the game, but it isn't the only powerful force that drives this franchise forward. The other is actually found within the pages of the Fazbear Frights books, Agony. Now, it's important to distinguish the difference between Agony and Remnant. I've seen a lot of places using the terms interchangeably, but in Fazbear Frights, they're explained to be distinctly different. Mm -hmm. Remnant is all about the soul. When an animatronic becomes possessed, that spirit literally becomes a to the metal. That metal can then be melted down into a substance that Fazbear Frights describes as a boiling liquid mercury. A exactly. Remnant. If you inject that metal into other See, animals, he actually it's understands. In the power of the original soul. Compare that to Agony. In the books, Agony is studied by Dr. Phineas Taggart. He states that Agony, quote, has a greater energetic radius and power than any other emotion. I've done numerous experiments to measure, capture, contain, and study the leftover emotion embedded into objects that were near a tragedy. The book even goes so far to explain that the items Phineas has collected weren't possessed by ghosts or spirits, but instead were energized by Agony. So when someone feels Agony, it doesn't just stay with them, it can infect inanimate objects around them and linger there. In other words, while those original animatronics no longer have spirits powering them, the agony they felt while being murdered remains attached to the suits. That's why the Blob's interested in collecting the suits. It's not collecting spirits, it's collecting agony. By combining them, it becomes more
more powerful. All the pain and suffering of the children from over the years brought together to create one giant monster. That's why the eyes are glowing red for all the animatronics and endoskeletons. It's also why the puppet and baby aren't glowing. The puppet has been put to rest by her father. She's no longer tormented. My daughter, if you can hear me, it's time to rest for you and for those you have carried in your arms. And Baby, well, yeah, she is certainly angry. She is jealous, but she's also eager to please her father even after death. Now we can do what we were created to do and be complete. I will make you proud, Daddy. She embraces the monster that she's become. She's not filled with agony, but everyone else? Absolutely. Even in that finale speech, we hear Henry say it. This place will not be remembered, and the memory of everything that started this can finally begin to fade away as the agony of every tragedy should. Agony! Woo woo, he did it! He said the word! <laughs> so, here we have it, friends. Over half a year after the game's release, we finally solved the last mystery of security breach. The blob isn't a giant continuity breaker, it's just a very cleverly composed amalgamation of animatronic parts slithering through the walls looking to accumulate agony. The tortured emotions coming from all the old animatronics on display throughout the pizza plex. And now that we've solved it, not convinced that we've seen the last of it. Despite the fact that the Afton ending's only worth two stars, when the highest is three, the DLC poster does seem to indicate that the story is going to follow this particular ending. Notice the melted parts of Chica's face, the ruined pizza plex, which directly follows the building collapse and Afton's ending. But look a little closer. There are mysterious red eyes up in the top left, yep. as well as some suspicious looking cables down in the bottom right. Even if the blob did I noticed that too, yeah. Afton during the ending, the agony it didn't. <laughs> the is beyond death, and it isn't able to simply let go. In short, the blob is still very much a threat, something that is more powerful than anything we've ever faced in the franchise. In fact, maybe my previous prediction about the Afton amalgamation could still come to pass. As I called out in a previous theory, in the books, Afton gets mixed up with a bunch of agony which creates a giant monster trash rabbit. And, uh, isn't that exactly what we're seeing in the ending of Security Breach? Afton well, yes, but actually no. <laughs> I suspect that Afton may be able to take control of this thing, overriding the blob's direction. He said it! <laughs> in order to wreak havoc on Gregory and whoever this new character might be, just like he does during the Stitch Raid stories from Fazbear Frights. The only issue is, I'm not sure how we'd be able to stop it. In Fazbear Frights, the solution is to see into people's memories and trap them inside those memories. It's a pretty random power, so it's hard to say how that might work in the games. Unless, of course, this new character is meant to be someone that could remind Afton or the blob of good memories bringing them back to reality and quelling the agony within but uh that my friends is a theory for another day so in the meantime remember it's all just a theory a game theory thanks for watching hmm okay so i very much disagree <laughs> and i think i've made that clear remnant doesn't burn in fire to put it simply so that means Happiest Day hasn't happened yet. That means the missing children are still in the blob. Although, I don't think... I don't think MatPat actually believes Molten MCI, despite it being a fact. Um, <laughs> um, so I guess he wouldn't believe that anyway. And I do believe the puppet is still here, but, like, not in its own body, but in the... But in, like, like in the wires. Because, like, the blob isn't, like, everything combined. They're just tangled together. So the puppet could very well just move its, its spirit into the the blobs like tentacles rather than the the like get get it out of the mask like i like how he says that the tentacles could relate to the puppet and then says the puppet's free and says nothing about the tentacles how exactly does that work <laughs> that doesn't make any sense um but i mean the the tentacles match up with what we see in the puppet in you're the band and in um and his night and his nightmare on in fnaf vr so i think the tentacles are supposed to say that this is the puppet um but yeah, uh, I think that's all to say. I do disagree with the video, but I understand where he's coming from. But um, maybe you should pay a little bit more attention to to like to Remnant and like how it doesn't burn in fire. Um, and maybe um, he should pay more attention to the insanity ending too. <laughs> Just the insanity ending as a whole. It tells us that Remnant does not burn in fire, and it also tells us that. Um, uh, them, the missing children are in, are in Molten Freddy, um, and he, he kind of, I feel like he just, I feel like Matt Pat, nothing against Matt Pat as a person, um, and his theories, sometimes they're good, <laughs> um, but I think he should just pay a little bit more attention to the insanity ending, but, yeah, 
Uh, I'm gonna end the video there. Um, my stream should be starting in like half an hour from when this video comes out. Hopefully, as long as I get it out in time. Maybe a little bit more than that. Um, I mean, a little bit less time than than half an hour. But um, yeah, I'm gonna end the video there. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to. Um, but yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.